Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So a recent book reading experience uh, kind of made me reflect on the idea of retellings and why I personally really, in theory, like them a lot. But when I was actually trying to think of examples of ones I liked, had a hard time coming up with a very comprehensive list. So basically the book that made me think about this was Roseblood. I did my big reading blog roast ranch review of it last week. And as I was reading it, I was like, oh, I really love retellings. I love Phantom of the Opera. I love retellings. Why don't I love this? And I get into why I don't love this in that video. But it made me think about like, okay, well, what does make a good retelling? And I, I think sort of where I landed was, I think good retellings do a couple of things. First of all, I think they need to have one of two types of relationships with the original source material. I think they either need to be a, a kind of retelling that is shedding new light on some of the underlying thematic or plot elements of the original story. So you can walk away thinking like, oh, I never noticed that in the original before, huh? Or I think that they need to try to be retelling in a different setting, a pretty similar story so that most of what you're getting is some verisimilitude and the the pleasure of nostalgia basically out of it in a slightly different telling. So I think those are sort of like the kind of two successful approaches good retellings take. And then I also think that retellings should have some rewards for people who are familiar with the source material. And what I mean by that is there are some retellings out there that I think people don't really even have an awareness that it is a retelling. A good movie example of that might be Bridget Jones's Diary. So there, it's entirely possible that somebody could watch that movie without knowing anything about Pride and Prejudice, right? But if you have read Pride and Prejudice, there are things in that movie that are almost like Easter eggs, basically, and little moments of like, oh, I know why they did that, or oh, I bet this might be about to happen, or I wonder if they're going to keep this piece. Like, there should be enough in there to reward people who are familiar with the source material. But that being said, I also do think that good retellings like in Bridget Jones's Diary you should be able to just read it entirely on its own without having to have read the source material. So it's sort of a fine balance to, to walk of, of having the delights of a retelling for those familiar with the source material, but having it be a story that is sufficiently complete that it can stand on its own. So like I said, when I was kind of thinking about good retellings, I actually had a pretty hard time coming up with a list I felt comfortable sharing because I do really, I read a lot of retellings and I really like retellings, but I don't end up thinking a lot of them are worthy of recommendation in terms of like as a retelling, if that makes any sense. I just used the word retelling about 20 times in that sentence. Basically what I mean is it's just a trope that I like. I like retellings as kind of a premise to a book. It's something that I like, but that being said, I don't know that that many of those retellings are all that successful. So. I decided to give you the list of ones that I was like, yes, I think that this has something to commend it beyond the fact that it's just a retelling and I like those. So a few different categories, so we'll get into that. So probably my very favorite category of retellings are fairy tale or myth retellings, uh, as opposed to previous works of literature. So that'll be the second half. But the first half is all of my favorite sort of like more fairy tale type retellings. And the granddaddy to rule them all for me. And that is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. These are fairy tale, like dark fairy tale retellings with a feminist sensibility. And they are so good. And when I think of favorite retellings, this is always my number one go to I just really I love the way she does it. She honors the original source material, but surprises and delights you with how she twists things around. She has several retellings of the same story in the collection. Like she has a couple of different Beauty and the Beast ones, whatever. Um, so I just, this is like the height of a retelling for me and immediately what I think of when I think of successful retellings. A YA retelling that I really like and I don't think it gets enough love anymore even though it is a Newbery Honor Medal winner. Um, but The Perilous Guard by Elizabeth Pope. It's set in the Tudor period under Mary Tudor and Elizabeth Tudor and Mary Tudor show up in this. And um, it's about a girl essentially who is helping Elizabeth and gets sent away by Mary to this like in the middle of nowhere castle and it's a Tamlin retelling. So I just yeah this is one that I really love. I think there's a lot of YA retellings and I don't 
always really end up enjoying them that much. This to me is my favorite one I've ever read, um, kind of in terms of the audience for it. And yeah, this is just like a delightful book that I wish more people would remember because it's, I remember loving it when I read it as a teen and it still holds up. I reread it from time to time. So a Tamlin retelling for you. Going to the very lowbrow, <laughs> um, I wanted to recommend Jill Miles's romance retellings of fairy tales. Uh, she also writes as Jessica Clare and Jessica Sims. Her authorial voice is one that I really like. Her humor really works for me is what a lot of it boils down to. I just find her very funny. And she has these novellas of a lot of different fairy tales and some of them kind of more obscure ones. Uh, but she, I just really like the way she does her retelling. She always has it that a girl in our world has died and she gets the option to live again if she goes into the fairy tale and makes it happen the way that it's supposed to. And you know, it's a romance, so not spoilers, she always ends up falling in love with, you know, the main, the principal dude in that in that story. So um, I really like all of those. I particularly like The Beast's Bride. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I Beauty and the Beast retellings are my very favorite. I also love uh, When Beauty Tamed the Beast by Eloisa James for a romance, Beauty and the Beast retelling. And another one from Jessica Clare, she has a contemporary called Beauty and the Billionaire, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling in a contemporary setting. So those are, I, I'm just a sucker for Beauty and the Beast retellings, but of her little, of the Jill Miles' little series of them, I do like the Beast Bride the best. Um, but yeah, I really like all of them. They are very smutty. So if that's not your thing, you may not like these, but I just, I think they're funny and I, I enjoy the sort of like, modern sensibilities into a fairy tale and having our narrator be, you know, kind of challenging some of the like misogynistic or racist or whatever dynamics in the fairy tale. I always find that really fun. And then a couple of kind of urban fantasy paranormal books that have strong, ro they're romances, I guess, but they more sit in kind of a fantasy space. One is Firelight by Kristen Callahan. Now I haven't read the rest of that series, but that is a Beauty and the Beast retelling with like some paranormal elements in a Victorian London type setting. I really enjoyed that one and keep meaning to get to the rest of the books because I've heard the whole series is really good. And this, this is maybe slightly kind of borderline if, if this should really be considered a retelling. This probably shouldn't be considered a retelling the Kate Daniel series, but mythos is such a huge part of what's happening in these books and kind of bringing these various mythological creatures to life in this urban fantasy setting that I felt like it deserved to at least be mentioned. I really like how she, um, how this team reimagines like biblical uh, stories into some of the magic and also just like mythologies from around the world. Part of what I like about this is I feel like every time I read one of these I discovered a new type of mythology that I might enjoy in fiction. So like Russian mythology or Indian mythology or Native American mythology or Irish mythology, whatever. Like there's just a lot of that and it's cool to see those mythological creatures sort of brought to life in the urban fantasy setting. So I thought I'd mention this one as well. Plus it's Kate Daniels and you know that like anytime I can bring up Kate Daniels, I do. So now we move into the retellings of classic works of literature. And I found for whatever reason that the most successful book that it gets retold is Pride and Prejudice. I think because it's such like the DNA of the sort of romantic genre in general that it's pretty easy to retell it because it's a story people are really familiar with. Um, but I thought I would give three different types of retellings that I have enjoyed. So the first one is The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet. Now somewhat I picked this because I think <laughs> Mostly I really just love this web series. This web series is awesome. It's still out there. It's free. I highly recommend it. It is very addictive. It, I was watching it my first year in grad school and was like, I need to be studying for midterms, but all I want to do is watch this. Um, but basically this reimagines Lizzie Bennett as a vlogger and she is essentially a poor grad student and Darcy is like a Silicon Valley millionaire. And it's just like a fun, I, I picked this as an example of Pride and Prejudice retold in a modern context in a way that actually makes sense for our world and our time period. This is like one of the most successful like reimaginings of, of recreating some of the class and power dynamic imbalances that exist in the original. I think that this does a really nice job of thinking what would that actually look like in our world. I really like how they handle the um, the stuff with Lydia in this in terms of like what her scandal is. I, I just think this is a really thoughtful reinterpretation retelling of this story. Um, and the diary, like this is the book version of it is really like, 
it's not as good as the web series it's not but it gets across a lot of that same um kind of pizzazz from the web series another very popular subgenre of pride and prejudice retellings is sort of like what i think of as fan fiction for pride and prejudice so it's a lot of like after she said yes and like some of it's erotic, which is weird. I just can't quite get into like sex scenes between Darcy and Lizzie. Like it's just, I mean, I like romance, but like I, for whatever reason, that's just a little bit of a stretch for me. But the most successful, and the reason I picked this up because I was intrigued by this twist, the most successful ty that type of retelling that is using the original characters in the original setting, but in a different way is a book called Unequal Affections by I think Laura, Ormiston. I'll make sure that I put her name below. Um, basically, it's a world that imagines that the first time Darcy proposes to Lizzie, she says yes. And so the conflict, essentially because she sort of like weighs out her options and she's like, I think this is, I probably more likely to regret not accepting him than regret accepting him. So she essentially, it's like he's fully in love with her and she's still very skeptical. So it's them like working through that. And I actually thought it was like, like a interesting approach to a fan fiction type retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So I would recommend that one. I think it's, it's thoughtful and I really enjoy it. And it has this one line in it that I still remember reading and being like, I can't imagine someone actually saying that to me because it's so romantic that like, I would simultaneously like be putty in their hands and also like laugh at the sappy. Like it's just, it was like, this is a perfect moment. Good job, Laura. And then the third Pride and Prejudice retelling uh, type is taking, instead of taking Pride and Prejudice and putting it into modern day, taking Pride and Prejudice and putting it in a totally different world. Um, you can kind of think maybe like Pride and Prejudice and zombies, like that kind of a take. My favorite is Heartstone. I talk about this book a lot. I really, really love this book. And I found out there's a sequel coming out in November. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. Pride and Prejudice in a world with dragons where Darcy is a badass, like, evil creature slayer, and Lizzie is like an herbal he healer who also can kick ass. It's real good. I really, really like this. I really recommend it, and I am pumped for the sequels. There's gonna be two more. Those were all my Pride and Prejudice ones. Then moving into Jane Eyre, there have been a lot of retellings of Jane Eyre. I have read a lot of retellings of Jane Eyre. I pretty much always don't like them. I think people have a real hard time capturing what is really good about the original into their retelling. One that I have not yet read, but I'm excited to read is Jane Steele. I have it and I just keep not getting to it. But anyway, I'm more hopeful for that one. But to date, the most successful Jane Eyre retelling I have encountered is Wide Sargasso Sea. And this is an example of a retelling that grabs a side character and tells the original story but through somebody else's point of view. And I think that this is successful in doing that. I like that it kind of problematizes and raises like questions about the original in an interesting way. Like this is a great example of a, a retelling that makes you rethink the original's thematic content. Um, ultimately, I do think that this has, I think some people use this as like the ultimate indictment on the original of like, see, Rochester's a monster. And I think that that is decontextualizing the original from its historical context. And basically I think misremembers some of what happens in the original because they only remember this. Anyway, all that being said, I still really like this and I think that it's like this was a really successful project that was an interesting project for the author to undertake. Okay, and then two last ones. One is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. So I've actually never fully read Dracula. I think I may have read an abridged version of it as a kid, but I don't think I've ever read the full OG Dracula. Um, so I can't speak to how it interacts with the retelling or with the original material. But that being said, it does pass the test of if you are not a reader of the original text, can you still enjoy the retelling? And I think you definitely can. I really like ep epistolary type novels. There's a lot of that in the historian. I think that I enjoy the way that the mythos gets built out. The ending is a little bit meh, but like overall, I think that was a really, I remember I had that as my plane book for a few weeks back when I was traveling every week for work. Um, and I would look forward to my plane trips because I would read how, for however long I was on there. So yeah, it was, I really enjoyed um, that 
retelling. And then finally, Cold Mountain by Charles Fraser is a retelling of uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And I just really like that book a lot. And I sometimes forget that it's a retelling. So that's part of why I brought it up as another example of one where even if you are not wholly familiar with the source material, even though I think most people are at least have the general outlines of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, yeah, I think it's a book that really stands up on its own. It's beautifully written. It made my entire family cry. We were listening to that one year on a road trip and we were all just like <laughs> sitting there crying in the car together. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful book and it is a retelling. So there you go. So yeah, those were some of my thoughts about what a good retelling consists of. Let me know if you have any kind of theories of the case uh, about retellings in the comments below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.